sind deine Piloten, wenn ihnen irgendwas passiert. Rakete, Rakete, Weltreich! Wirst du dir das niemals verzeihen. Jetzt gibt's kein Zurück. Komm schon! Oh mein Gott! Na, macht Spaß? Well, we were very upfront with them that the the flying sequences in this film were going to be captured for real. So, from the very start, we weeded out anyone who wasn't up for that experience. Um, so that you know, when we narrowed it down to the actors that are in the film, they were all very excited. Even if I don't think they understood a hundred percent what they were getting themselves into. Um, Tom, you know, having made the first Top Gun and, and done a lot of practical action sequences through his career, knew that they would need a certain amount of training to get it comfortable in the cockpit. So he designed a uh, pilot training course for all of them that lasted about three months, taking them from a Cessna, which is a very slow flying training plane, all the way up to the F-18 Super Hornet. Um, so by the time we were shooting, they were all uh, relatively prepared for what was required. In addition, the Navy required them all to go through underwater training you know, courses so that if they found themselves in the water uh, in an airplane due to some sort of malfunction, they would know how to get out of their seat uh, even if they were underwater, you know, upside down and, and be able to get to the surface. So they, they, they had the same training that the Navy pilots had uh, before they were able to shoot these sequences. Well, the, you're going to see some aerial sequences in this film that I think have never been done before. Um, there is a sequence in the middle of this film and if you've seen it, it's the scene where Maverick flies the low-level training course to prove the mission can be done, mm -hmm. uh, where we got special permission from the Navy to fly under 50 feet above the ground, which is very, very low, um, especially when you're traveling 500 miles an hour. Uh, it was flown by the, the one of the top pilots in the Navy. Mm -hmm. And I think it's one of the most intense things Tom's ever done, but um, necessary to kind of sell what, what's happening in that part of the movie. Yeah, well, the, the theme of the film is about teamwork and sacrifice and camaraderie. And so we didn't want to make it a film about politics. So the, the faceless, nameless enemy is certainly part of the design from the beginning, just like the first Top Gun. Um, so everything is fictional. You know, we shot it in Washington State, uh, up in the northwest corner of the United States, um, just to give it a very unique uh, and, uh, and, and a look that's kind of the opposite of what you'd expect in a Top Gun movie, which for me was exciting to get out of that sunset landscape and get into something much different. Well, the, the purpose of the mission isn't a, an invasion or anything. It's, it's about keeping the world safe. So mm -hmm. that was, you know, we shot this film in 2018. Um, obviously, the world changes every day. Um, but again, you know, the, the, the theme of the film is one of, of teamwork and, and never leave your wingman. So that's kind of the focus of the film. And, and it's not really meant to be about uh, anything other than that. I think it's really, it's, it's like the first film, it's really a film about friendship um, and, uh, you know, this notion of a wingman is someone who always has your back no matter what. Uh, I think that theme is continued from the first film to this one, but obviously this is a brand new story. It's a whole new rite of passage story for Maverick and um, you see him go through this very kind of character-driven experience uh, and end up in a very different place at the end of this film than we find him at the beginning.
Well, it's all under the direction of Tom and Joe Kaczynski and, and our writers. We had terrific writers working on this. So we we're very fortunate to have such great talent surrounding us to make this film as good as we possibly can. It really hasn't changed because you just gotta tell a great story. It's all about story, character, and plot. And if you tell a great story with great characters and interesting plot about something, you can make a good movie. We, we, it's a, it's a no-faced enemy and it's all about the competition of the pilots. That's what it's, it's a story about sacrifice, competition, and friendship. And a journey for Maverick, his journey where he is in his life and what he finds through, through his love affair, through the pilots that he works with, and through his excellence as a pilot himself. Well, it's, we started this movie, I guess it's been held for two years, so this wasn't, uh, this, the war wasn't going on, uh, there was, it was much calmer times. Unfortunately, we hit a, a pandemic and the movie took two years to come out. But it's all about seeing it with a big audience and that's what, why we made it. We wanted to see it on a big screen and hopefully with a full house. But everything was done for real. It took us three months to, to train the pilots. Uh, they were on three to four different jets. They started with a prop plane, then they went into an aerobatic prop, then they went into a jet, and then they went on, into an F-18. Uh, so the G-forces, the G-force tolerance, they were doing seven G-forces. One G-force is your body weight. They were doing seven times your body weight. They, it's like an elephant sitting on your chest. So when you see these sequences, it's actually for real what these young actors are going through. And it took us 15 months to figure out where to put the cameras, how to keep them tied down so they wouldn't float away. And Joe Kaczynski over, oversaw that and he had to go through all the Navy lawyers so there was no liability in case a uh, camera came loose. We filmed them from the air, we filmed them from the ground. We had helicopters around the, the, the airplanes too. So it was a real experience for the audience to feel what these jet pilots go through when they're flying one of these high powered machines. And especially the, the kind of stress on your body and these actors came down, they were soaking wet after one sortie of a couple hours. And if it didn't work because we couldn't see what they were doing up there, uh, we, we, uh, we had to do it all over again. So we sent them right up back up in the air. And a lot of actors wouldn't do this because they were afraid of flying or didn't want to do it for real. But the actors we picked are the ones who wanted to experience what a, what a jet fly, fighter pilot goes through. Yeah, we all did. Uh, you know, all of our friends, my friends growing up, this was a this was a big deal, this movie. Uh, in the old days, you had to get excited for a movie by reading about it in a magazine or seeing a trailer before uh, another movie. Uh, it's very different. An anticipation of films is very different now with the internet. Uh, but we we had a much more analog experience with it. So when it came out, I remember we were all basically salivating to go see this film. It just looked so cool. And then we did, we saw it. And then as soon as it was over, we all wanted to see it again. Um, and it was, that was, that was the impact that this movie had on, on my generation of, 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 of moviegoers really. Uh, and you know, I, I don't know if I wanted to be Maverick, but I wanted to be near Maverick for sure. That was, everything about that film was just so cool. And so to get the opportunity to be in the, the next chapter of this, of this story with, with some of the same characters and, uh, was, was a thrill of a lifetime for sure. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the big question, isn't it? Uh, you know, it's the rules are there, but rules are also sometimes made to be broken. And I think that that's, that's Maverick's take and Cyclone's take is a little more straightforward. And I think the friction that comes when those two uh, bump up against each other is what provides the dramatic tension in the second half of the film. I think that that's, that's, the, uh, that's the, the, the big question is when is it okay to break those rules and when is it okay to push past limits? Uh, and that's, that's what, our, what our boy Maverick uh, finds out. Uh, 
Uh, sure. I think uh, I think anybody that's that's been around this industry long enough understands that uh, there's always a new generation coming up and nipping at your heels in some way, shape, or form. And you know, being outmoded or being uh, you know uh, sort of a, a relic is the is the worst thing you can be. But uh, but you know. For better or for worse, Tom Cruise has been doing this for the better part of four decades at a very high level, and that's uh, that says something. He's got his 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 lasting, his enduring uh, charisma and his enduring ability to to continue to be uh, a movie star is is impressive. You know, it's 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 not without a lot of work, that's for sure. Uh, but the, to be able to watch somebody. Uh, do what we do at such a high level for so long is, is inspiring. Well, you know, we, we obviously the, the filmmakers uh, involved with this have a very good relationship with uh, all of the armed forces, but the Navy in particular. And uh, the first film was, was a big uh, recruitment tool for the Navy back in the 80s. Uh, a lot of the guys that we worked with said they became naval aviators because of Top Gun. And so obviously there's a very good uh, symbiotic relationship between the two entities. And uh, because of that, we were able to have a lot of access to a lot of um, senior uh, admirals and, and, and the sort of executive class of, of, of the Navy. And so we were able to learn a lot from them and how they go about you know, their decision-making process and, and how difficult it is when you're dealing with the lives of hundreds of uh, men, men and women and, and, and you're also dealing with hundreds of millions of dollars worth of taxpayer-funded equipment. So those, those are decision-making processes that are not entered into lightly. And I think that's, that's the kind of um, attitude you have to have when you're dealing with, with that. Uh, I think she's um, independent and strong. You know, she runs this bar that she owns that's frequented by all the uh, pilots and um, the naval aviators. And she's really built a community there. You can feel she's a single mom. She's got a great relationship with her daughter. I think that she's, uh, you know, she's someone who seeks out adventure um, she has, I think, a lot of fun in life, and she has a pretty good positive attitude. I think that she approaches life's challenges with a lot of humor also and playfulness, which you can see from the way she in interacts with Pete, you know, when he shows up. Um, I think... You know, the sort of, uh, I thought it was, she was well written in the script when I read it. Um, she was written as quite a strong character and I appreciated that and, and wanted to, um, you know, keep an eye on that because I, I felt that that was an important trait of hers. I think it's so hard to make these sort of sweeping generalized statements mm -hmm. about it because there are always, I mean, even if you look at the original Top Gun, you know, Kelly McGillis's character was his superior. Um, so, uh, and she was quite a strong, intelligent character. Um, and uh, yeah, it's very hard to make those generalizations. Of course, there's been a lot of focus on um, roles for women in the industry and condi working conditions for women and um, and and that's that is all all great and I think we have made great strides. The whole process, to be honest with you, um, was pretty extraordinary. Um, working with Tom. I've never come across anyone like him. Mm -hmm. uh, his the sort of his enthusiasm, the level of his enthusiasm and commitment and passion for making movies, his process, the way he works to find a story and 
hone in on a story. It was really interesting for me. Um, so it was kind of the whole, the whole process of the filming in all. But then, of course, it was punctuated by these scenes that had these, you know, uh, extraordinary action sequences, like riding on a motorcycle or the sailboat scene or the flying sequence. You know, those were kind of more extraordinary life adventures. It, sure, I mean, I, I had been sailing before, I'd been on motorcycles before, and obviously I've been in planes before, but I'd never been in a, in a P-51 before. Um, and uh, so that was a different experience. And, uh, you know, with Tom as the pilot, that was certainly, um, that was a d different kind of experience than, I, than I've had before. You know, I, I didn't get a chance to, to talk to Anthony before before filming. I've I, I've I've still yet to meet Anthony or or Meg Ryan for for that matter too, because she's she uh, you know is, is Bradley's mom. But no, I haven't. I'm I'm looking forward to once this movie comes out. I hope Anthony and I can kind of sit down and and chat about about our our experiences with these movies. I hope I hope I hope he enjoys enjoys the movie. I hope he enjoys the performance. I, I'm I'm pretty sure he will. Um, but you know, with with Anthony and what he was able to do with that character, Goose became such an iconic character for so many people. And he really, you know, he he just is. He he was that that perfect wingman. And um, so I, I'm glad they didn't ask me to to try and be Goose. I'm I'm glad that we weren't doing a, a remake. So I had a I had a lot of fun playing playing this part. Yeah, I mean, I I think it's the fact that you know, for 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 Rooster, that his his dad was a fighter pilot. Um, you know, Maverick was a fighter pilot. These were guys that he he obviously looked up to an incredible amount. And I think for him to want to kind of follow in his dad's footsteps and to do the exact same training that killed his, his dad uh, just sh shows um, the determination of him. And I think that was something I really responded to with the, with the character. I think there's a lot of things um, that would make people maybe um, a little too uncomfortable um, kind of with everything that was at, at stake there. But it was, uh, yeah, I'm really, I'm really proud of the storyline that, that they gave Rooster in this one. So for this movie, it, it took about a, a year to make, um, but before we even started filming, there was, there was so, you know, there was months and months of, of flight training, and that was something that Tom came up with a program for all of us, and we were flying, you know, for a minute there was like every day, almost, or every other day, to, to get the hours logged and to understand what, what aviation really is all about. Um, we kind of did all of the initial steps that somebody would do to get their pilot's license and then we and then we kicked it up a notch and then we had to you know get in the jets and and yeah get our get our g tolerance up so that we could we could fly with these fighter pilots and and film a a really great movie um well, I think a part of it comes down to belief in in yourself and belief in in your own skill sets. It also probably takes a little bit of stubbornness. Um, but I think I think there's you know the relationship between Rooster and, and Maverick. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of love there. And these were um, you know in the in the situation they get put in at the end. I I just think I think there's an immense amount of loyalty that that Rooster feels to Maverick and. Uh, you know, I think he feels that Maver well, Maverick shows him. Maverick, Maverick did the same thing for him. So I, I think that's that's really what it what it was all about for those guys. <laughs>